I'm Carrie Tomlinson in Washington, D.C. I was minding my own business online when out of the blue, I get a message from this guy who says he is an oil rig worker in Texas looking for love. Well, the picture looked familiar to me. Turns out it's not the oil rig worker, it's someone else. We'll get to that in just a second. It was too much for me to resist. I went undercover as his next victim, spending months talking to him to show you the tried and true techniques and also some new techniques they're using to try to take your money. Look who wants to connect. It's Derek Herman, a Texas oil rig engineer. Or maybe not. We reverse search his image and find out our Derek is really Jim Newman, once the cowboy from the village people. The group known for the famous song YMCA. In fact, there he is in this 2015 concert. But many people don't do a reverse search on images. They're not expecting a scammer in their messages, in words with friends or Facebook or TikTok, and the fakes slip through. Now Derek Herman spins out his story. He's a widower, raising his 14-year-old son on his own. He's born and raised in Houston, went to elementary school here, high school here and got his degree in chemical engineering from the University of Houston. Derek's out of town right now on this oil rig in the North Sea near the Netherlands, working as a chemical engineer with ExxonMobil. He says to message him when we're ready to talk, and we are ready to talk. He's looking for a life partner, and his sweet talk might just convince you he's the one. Now it's time to catfish the catfisher. Expose his lies, slow him down. Hello, babe. I miss you so much. We'll draw out as much info as we can and fill his time to keep him away from real victims. When can he stay with you in my hands, babe? That would be the greatest blessing of all. That was all I ever wished for. <laughs> and I feel like you will never break my heart. You will never lie to me. You will never hurt me. You will always be there for I, me. I promise, babe. I promise you. I love you so, so much. We tracked down the real man behind Derek's photos. There are thousands of profiles using my pictures. This is him, Jim Newman in New York. It's just, it's just really sad. Con artists have been stealing his pictures for about five years, he says, using them to lure people in. So people like me who are who are in an age who are older, you know, an older guy and uh, who have a lot of social media, that's that's their that's their bread and butter. If there's any small, tiny positive side, it's that they think you're attractive enough to use <laughs> for their scams. Well, I, I guess because it's, it's just been so negative, it almost feels like, I mean, they don't think of me as a person any more than they think of these women as a person. We are all just a crop for them to harvest. In Derek's case, the harvest begins with a compliment. You have a gorgeous smile, then moves quickly to tragedy. He lost his wife to heart failure and his son in a car crash. It's designed to stir up your emotions and make you feel sympathy. Derek has hope and a goal. I want to have a loving family. Another lure designed to draw you in based on what he sees on your social media. He'll move you off that social media or email and onto Google Chat, where he can easily talk to and manipulate many victims at once. And then the real campaign begins. Your love is hypnotizing. I can't get my senses back. Every morning, he sends a romantic message. Sometimes a link to a love song and a picture of hearts or flowers. He hints at marriage and promises trips to Rome and Paris. He doesn't even notice we've changed our name from Carrie to Karen. You smell better than the sweet berries. You're a bundle of joy for me. Kind of like a baby. Check out these messages with a search online. You'll find they simply copy them from sites like this one. 2023 long love messages for her then paste them into multiple victims' chats at once. He supplements the daily notes with calls. And I'm gonna take it to Texas. Hoping his victims have already moved past the point of doubt, and in many cases, they have. I know with you, my future, wow, it's gonna be amazing. How does he explain the accent? He lives in Houston. Does he not even explain that? 
he says his mother is Spanish and his father is Danish. And that's why he has this accent, even though he was born and raised in Houston. The real weapon here, however, is not the love messages, but instead the regular daily questions about what you had for lunch. How are you feeling? What are you doing today? The constant companionship from morning until night, fulfilling a crucial need of the human psyche. You're looking for that relationship, not necessarily looking for love. You, you're looking for that companionship relationship with somebody. These romance scams can go from day one, 12 months. This can be a long play. But we're ready for the long play too, including a trip to Houston to check on Derek's Texas backstory. Is he stealing someone's identity as well as pictures? We're on a mission here in Houston to find out if any part of his story is true. Is there a real Derek Herman somewhere in Houston? What if, for example, he stole someone's pictures because he didn't want to show his face? Looking at all possibilities. Turn right on Preston Street. First, we go to the records building for Harris County, the main county in Houston. Window 21. Let's see if he owns property here. I am checking on property tax records for somebody. What is his first and last name? His first name is Derek and last name Herman. Window 17. Nothing for Derek Herman. Next, upstairs to voting records. Has he ever registered to vote here? No. We check many other records as well. What about that engineering license in Texas? No. That college degree from the University of Houston he claimed to have? No. This is it. Did he go to Robert Lee High School in Houston, now called Wisdom High, as he said? No. And best of all, the grade school he claimed to attend, Havard Elementary. So we learned something interesting at the school. It wasn't built until 1998. That means if Derek Herman is 57 now, as he claims, he would have been going to elementary school at the age of 32. So what have we learned today here in Houston, besides the fact that this Derek Herman character is a total liar? We've learned that one trick the scammers use is to just pick some names from an area to back up their storyline. They hope that you won't ask too many questions, that you won't check or verify, that you trust them. For the purposes of this investigation, I pretended with Derek that I believed him. He says, babe, video calls are restricted. We believe him, even when he tells us he can't do a video call on the rig for safety reasons and would need a non-explosive camera. Not true, of course. We believe him when he later sends a picture, supposedly of himself on the rig, cooking over an open flame in a kitchen that looks nothing like a real oil rig kitchen. We believe him even when he fails the singing test. And if they found a fountain of youth, Derek sent us this video stolen from Jim Newman, pretending he was singing just for us. More I but will he sing now, live on the call? Sing something for me. Your voice is so sweet. Like, wow. And eventually he sang the song. How was it? He's such a bad singer. <laughs> <laughs> You're so special to me. It's as if Derek knows that once he has us on the hook, we'll believe anything, and some victims do. I'll tell you how beautiful you are. They really need to trust that guy. When that first thing comes in, they're like, oh, that seems a little, they, they have to trust it. And I know it's, it's, it's frustrating because they found somebody they thought was really nice and funny to talk to or what have you, but really trust those instincts because they're 100% of the time right. He says, I have been thinking about how our first meeting would be, babe. After three weeks of persistent messaging, Derek finally lays out the scam. He can't leave the oil rig for eight more months unless, of course, we apply for a family leave request, starting with this email to his management, supposedly from the site My Oil and Gas Career. Then, at last, we could be together. Just a few problems. The oil rig picture he sent, claiming to be where he's working near the Netherlands, is really a stock photo of a rig 3,000 miles away. 
Also, oil rig workers stay on their vessels for much shorter stints, not eight months. And the real sight, my oil and gas career, has never heard of Derek Herman. Still, we apply for the permit. The following are details you should provide. Name, nationality, ID card. Surprise, we're approved. We're verified as authentic, so authentic. All we need to do is pay $1,850 and Derek can come home to see us at last. A company rep named Gabriel Phillips messages us with a link to pay. But the account name is Bridget Anik Horo, another person unknown to the real My Oil and Gas career. Time for us to put the brakes on this payment with a series of delays, all of which make Derek unhappy. I say, I click, and nothing happens. We need to verify the company address first. Then the app isn't working for us. And finally, we bring in an imaginary friend, Dana, who tells us the app is not secure and we shouldn't use it. You see, he says, I don't like third party in affairs. I don't like what you're doing. So Dana is the man here and she decides for us, isn't it? Now a call from Derek, no longer sweet, trying to bully us into using the app or giving him our credit card number. Send me the card, I'll do it. But she no, said, no, she said, what, what the f you see? Oh, she she like, said, she said, she said, she said, what, what do I have to do with she? I told you not to involve the death party in this. Come on. She said the app is not a company app. It's not a company app. It's a payment gateway. For crying out loud, it's a payment gateway. Stop talking to tough people. Wow. But. We continue talking to daft people. Now we insist the app is so insecure, we need to wire him the money and we need an account to send it to. He obliges begrudgingly with this very valuable info. It's someone's bank account with their name, clearly an account he thinks his scam group controls. It could be another scam victim or someone working with them. We contact the bank, law enforcement, and the person on the account to stop the scammers and possibly save another victim. Over months of chats, we ask for accounts and receive them from Ohio, Virginia, Pennsylvania, and more. Yes, we alert banks and police and the name on the account. It's one of the most important parts of this investigation. Correct. However, it's a one-way street. We rarely get info back. We simply hope we're shutting down parts of the scammer's infrastructure and preventing new victims from the intense suffering and shame of a romance scam. This is happening all over the world. Victims often contact Jim, first angry with him, thinking he took their money. It's sad. Then destroyed by the knowledge that this intense relationship was just a sick game. Be careful. And that's just heartbreaking because they're just sitting there crying and they're like, I knew, I know, I just didn't want to know because my life is so depressing. You know, it's that kind of, it's so dark. He's asking, can you go to the bank today? Derek can only take so many delays in payment. It's time to pull the final trick. We let him know we've come down with COVID. Hello, my love, can you hear me? Now we can't go to the bank. But we have more time at home for a call with Derek and our imaginary son, Malachi. Hi, Derek. How's it going? When Derek hears our volunteer son's voice, he immediately says there's an audio problem he can't hear, a trick he's used many times. I can't even get any sounds from your hands. But he still uses the chat and talks out loud. Like I want to make a family with you and your mom. It's bad enough that Derek would scam an adult, but he's willing to cause deep psychological damage to what he knows to be a 13-year-old boy with a single mom. I'm going to take you in as my son, and I promise to take care of you. Horrifying. As a final gesture, we pressure Derek to sing to his future son, who's disappointed that he couldn't talk to his future stepfather. Here it comes. I'll sing something my dad used to sing. Little boy, riding on the bus, I went to the farm, took the ball, kids to the cows, trying to make... The cows, they go moo, moo, moo. <laughs> what is the song? Oh, I can't forget the song. I guess they didn't tell them what songs to sing. They got to teach these kids. I had pictures sent to me of them. Literally, they're just seven guys sitting around a 
someone's living room with iPads, you know, flipped open. They give them, they give them, they feed them Coke and snacks, and they're just, you know, because they're talking to several different women. He's very demanding. Call your friend to help you today. We're sick with COVID, confined to our house, but Derek constantly pressures for the money. There's only one thing to do. He tells us to go to a hospital for a ventilator to breathe better. And we do. Karen is out. Our regular messaging stops. Ah yes, hello, my angel. Derek continues with the regular love notes. But we're in and out of the hospital for weeks, stretching out the engagement to save just a few more bank accounts, just a few more people, if possible, until Derek is completely disgusted. He wants payment or else. Now, the last call. I still have my bank still on the restriction. I will have to be in the States to work things out. That's why I was unable to make the payment myself. I want to tell you something that I'm feeling deep inside, but promise you won't hang up. No, babe. I want to know why you are using someone else's pictures and pretending that you are that person. Most scammers hang up immediately. Derek offers just a few more words. Why do so you say that? Why are you using the pictures of a famous singer to try to scam people? I don't get you, babe. I'm not standing in the one picture. So you are telling me that you are the man in the pictures who is actually a singer from the United States. And he's gone for a few seconds. So right after he hung up, he contacted me again through chat and he is very unhappy. He says, get lost, get lost, you walking dead. Cancer will hit you soon. You will get a brain cancer and a bone cancer. This is a lot less romantic than his previous conversations. And I ask him one more time, why did you steal another man's pictures? No answer, he's gone. Oh, he's not one of the brighter ones, unfortunately. <laughs> he's not. Not. Jim sees the humor, but also the destruction. It's really horrible. And As an actor and performer, he says he can't close down his social media. He's lost thousands of dollars in work, some platforms shutting down his accounts for months after complaints from victims. I just reported over 100 more fake profiles using my images. Plus, the sorrow of knowing his face is leading thousands of people to devastation. There's just a lot of uh, isolation, loneliness, and, and sadness that comes with that. And the fantasy of feeling like they're in love with someone is so strong that they shut off all their instincts. That's the part that I don't know how to fix. What can you do? First, use a reverse search on pictures right away to see if they could be stolen. Also, check the account connecting with you. How long has it existed? Are there any other signs of this person online? If this person has no history, if the profile you, that you're seeing appears to start three months ago, and this identity doesn't go back beyond three months, that should also be a red flag to you. Never give money to someone you've never met and report the scammers to the platform you're on from social media to dating sites to words with friends. Report it to the FBI, not here at FBI headquarters in DC where we are, but online at ic3.gov. Also report it to the Federal Trade Commission at reportfraud.ftc.gov. You may just be able to stop the next Derek Herman from stealing your money or someone else's. I'm Carrie Tomlinson in Washington, DC for Ampere News.